The Korean Motorfest is shaping up to be this year's standout racing title. The first entry in the series for 5 years, the third instalment sees you entering the Motorfest Festival on the beautiful island of Oahu. Ubisoft invited us to get hands on with the game again, but this time explore the open world of the Crew Motorfest. So just how stunning is the world of the Crew Motorfest? I'm Mark from Racing Games and let's take a look and find out. In our last preview we were limited to just the opening stages of the Crew Motorfest. This time around we were let loose across the entire island of Oahu. The world of the Crew Motorfest is absolutely stunning. From sandy beaches to vibrant jungles to volcanic mountains, there's a bit of everything in Oahu. This combined with freeways that scythe their way across the island and the dense urban environment of the city of Honolulu means there are a multitude of different surfaces to race on in the game. In our preview, we ventured from the volcanic summit right the way down to the black sandy beaches. We also drifted through the jungles before ramping over rooftops in the centre of Honolulu. And of course, we raced around the local tracks surrounding the Motorfest itself, the central hub of the Crew Motorfest. Racing across the island allows you to appreciate both the scale and beauty of Oahu, but the Crew Motorfest looks even more impressive from the air. Planes and boats return in the Crew Motorfest, allowing you to explore the map from more than just the ground. If you have a long drive to your next waypoint, you can once again seamlessly switch to a plane and take a shortcut through the clouds. So we know that Oahu is the perfect setting for the Motorfest Festival, but what can you actually do in the Crew Motorfest? Our preview gave us access to three of the main playlists available in the Crew Motorfest. These were Made in Japan, Hawaii Scenic Tour and 9-11 Legacy. We opted to give the Hawaii Scenic Tour a play first. This playlist introduces you to Oahu, with your local guide Keola showing you all the sights and sounds of Hawaii. The first event sees you racing around a track within the Motorfest site, showing you the grounds of the festival and establishing the Hawaiian culture the game embraces. The Hawaii Scenic Tour is a great way to learn your way around the island. Each race contains a cutscene showing the locations you're about to race through. All the while, Keola tells you the history of the island in his native language. Keola also captures photos of the island's landmarks as you speed past them, saving them for your collection. It is a bit contradictory having Keola telling you all about the peacefulness and beauty of the island whilst you're racing around in a Ford Bronco, especially when you're crashing through trees and buildings. But at the same time, it's a clever way to integrate the culture into the game, just like Forza Horizon 5 manages with its story events. Once we got a fair way through this playlist, we switched over to the 9-11 Legacy. Unlike the Scenic Tour, this playlist is all about racing history. Each event sees you take the wheel of an iconic Porsche 911 from racing history, including GT3 cars, 911 turbos and even Le Mans contenders. The 911 Legacy playlist culminates in a race against a Porsche test driver orchestrated by a director of the company. To call this race a challenge would be an understatement, as you thunder through the streets of Honolulu against a seemingly impossible to beat foe. The Crew Motorfest can be a real test at times, but fortunately there is a system in place to help you when you struggle. Just like in Forza Horizon 5, the game recognises if races are too easy or too difficult and prompts you to raise or lower the difficulty accordingly. We found this a little too sensitive at times though, encouraging you to raise the difficulty after winning a race by 20 seconds only to then suggest lowering it again after finishing 4th in the very next race. The Crew Motorfest does have a large gap between difficulty levels, with some races being far too easy whereas others took multiple attempts to complete the required objective. As we've already said, the transitions between vehicle types were seamless. When events were spaced miles apart, we simply found a straight piece of tarmac for a run up then switched to a plane for the journey. Once we were near the waypoint, it was a case of nose diving back towards the ground and then switching back to the car before impact. As faultless as the transitions are in the Crew Motorfest, they did still highlight one issue with the game. From what we could tell during our playtime, there's no way to set default vehicles in the Crew Motorfest. This means every time you switch from one vehicle type to another, you'll always end up in the same vehicle. We also found the plane controls to be a little counterintuitive. Normally in aircraft, to steer you roll the plane. But in the Crew Motorfest, attempting to roll the plane instead causes it to drift. To actually steer the plane, you have to hold the skill button used for barrel rolls. Of course, these are small issues, but they do require some adjusting or unnecessary trips through the menu to resolve. This is just a preview however, therefore these kinks could be ironed out before the game is released. Overall, the Crew Motorfest is incredibly fun to play and we can't wait to get back to Oahu when the game launches. The Crew Motorfest speeds onto PC and console on the 14th of September, or three days earlier for those who buy either the Gold or Ultimate editions. Are you looking forward to getting stuck into the Crew Motorfest? Which playlist are you playing first? 
and what do you make of the stunning open world of Oahu? Let us know down below and be sure to subscribe for all things The Crew Motorfest. For now though, thanks for watching. I've been Mark from Racing Games, a big thanks to Ubisoft for inviting us to try out the game again, and we'll see you here on the channel for another video soon.